Hey, it's Dr. Darren Schmidt at the Nutritional Healing Center of Ann Arbor. And uh, check out this cool shirt, Ketosis. It's a fat thing. And it's got the three ketones, acetoacetic acid, acetone, and beta-hydroxybutyric acid. Uh, patient got this. All right, cool. So, I bet you're jealous. All right, I'm going to talk about another new study that came out. It's a, con a controlled clinical trial, a year-long ketogenic eating, and... Um, it was re uh, Dr. Finney, one of the ketogenic research leaders for the past 30 years, he was involved. The main person was Dr. Sarah Hallberg. She's a medical doctor, and she was in charge of uh, monitoring, and uh, they had a team for educating. They did some of the education online, and some was in person. Um, either way, it worked very well. So, um, But before I go into that study, I want to talk about this, the public health collaboration. This is in the U.K., so PHC uk.org and this is low fat versus low carb eating and this is very simple i just want to hit this first because this has been the debate for decades and decades like we're talking atkins versus esselstyn and ornish like back then that was the debate low um low carb versus low fat so this group here has been uh collecting randomized control trials on the two subjects where they take low carb and they uh, compare that with low fat with people. And so the definition here of low carb is less than 130 grams of carbohydrate per day, which is actually really easy to do. I've been doing less than 100 grams or probably more like less than 75 for 18 years. Uh, and then the low fat diet is less than 35% fat of total calories. So if you get your uh, percent fat of total calories up to 75 and 80%, now you're eating ketogenically for sure. But this is less than 35% fat of total calories. Okay, so they have 62 studies that they've gathered up that are quality studies. There's a lot of junk out there, and you got some smart people in this collaboration um, looking at the, the studies. So here on the left, you have each study with the duration. So this one, the second one here is 12 months long. And uh, you can click on this. The link is below, but you can click on this one and this one and this one, and you can go right to that study so you can look at all the numbers. And then the second column here is the weight loss for the low-carb group. The third column is the weight loss for the low-fat group. And then you have the number of participants over here on the far right. So, for example, this first study was six months long. The low-carb group lost 8.5 kilograms. One kilogram is 2.2 pounds. So just take that 8.5 times Two, it's going to be a little bit more than that. So about, it's about 19 pounds of weight loss. And then here we have the low-fat part of the study. They lost 4 kilograms, 3.9, so that's going to be 9 pounds of weight loss. So let's just, I'm going to scroll down. There are 62 studies, and they, at the very bottom, they have the results in total. And um, here we go. So uh, right here, so of the 62 studies, 53 show that the low-carb group lost more weight than the low-fat group. And then over here, 7 out of the 62 studies showed that the low-fat diet did better. Okay, but let's talk about this. Here it says that 31 of the 62 uh, low-carb weight loss, um, showing that low-carb is better for weight loss, 31 are clinically significant or statistically significant. Now, this is important for you to know what that means. So here I grabbed a uh, uh, website, investopedia.com. What this is, it's a website for people who invest. So if you want to invest money in pharma or supplements or Jenny Craig, and there's studies on these health therapies, um, they're telling the investors that right here, what is st statistically significant? It is the likelihood that a relationship between two or more variables is caused by something other than chance. Okay, so that way you can vet these research studies from companies and say, oh, but your study's not statistically significant. It's just luck that it came out that way. Okay, but 31 of these 62 studies showing low-carb they are not by chance, they are caused, the weight loss was caused by the diet, the low-carb diet. Now over here on the low-fat side, zero of the studies were statistically significant showing low-fat diet was better. So 
Now, that means that seven of the low fat, uh, pro low fat studies were um, by chance. It was just luck that people lost weight, if you will, on the low fat diet. Okay, so having said that, um, and you can see right here 2,500 versus 2,600, there's thousands of people involved in these studies. Okay, so having said that, 31, the score is 31 nothing. Low carb beats low fat. And there were absolutely zero studies, sig significant studies that showed low fat was, was good for weight loss. Okay, now moving on, that's low carb versus low fat. Let's talk about ketosis and this new study, and then I'm going to compare that with veganism at the very end. Okay, now with this new study, um, Dr. Sarah Hallberg and other people, McKenzie and, and like I said, uh, Finney was involved. Um, they did the first release of data at 10 weeks, and they just released the second part of the data for the one-year landmark. Okay, so in 10 weeks, there's an average reduction in A1C of 1.0. So A1C is a long-term measurement of diabetes in, in the blood, and it went from 7.6 to 6.6. The goal is 5.7 or less. That um, new number, it, it's a new number. As of September of 2017, the goal is to get below 5.7 A1C. Okay, so 87% of the people eliminated or reduced their insulin. There's 400 people here um, total in the study, and then there were 100 control, so it's 500 total really. And of the 400, there were 262 with type 2 diabetes, and the rest had what you might call a metabolic syndrome. So they're overweight, they had some bad cholesterol and all that kind of stuff. But 87% of the type 2 diabetics eliminated or reduced their insulin, which is fantastic. 48% of them reduced their A1C to below 6.5. And 75% of the people who completed 10 weeks experienced clinically significant weight loss of, less, of uh, greater than 5% of their weight. And they, their average weight was at 257 pounds, so it's pretty good. 91% completed the protocol at 10 weeks, which is fantastic. And then um, there was a 20% average reduction in triglycerides. Now, that's really cool because triglycerides are fuel, and the body's starting to mobilize the triglycerides into the blood, and it's, they're starting to burn fat. They are burning fat, and the fat is triglycerides. Now, I've said this before, but LDL cholesterol, the bad cholesterol, it's not bad. It's the bus that carries the triglycerides. So the LDL goes up a lot of times because there's a lot of people that need to board the bus. There's a lot of triglycerides that need to get on the bus to be transported, to be used. So don't freak out if your LDL goes up. I got a video right here about um, raising your LDL. Okay, next slide. So at 10 weeks, here's the weight loss. Average was two pounds per week. Now, initially, some people can lose... 10 pounds in one week. Um, but, and right here it says modest. I would not use the term modest at two pounds a week. I've said my whole career, if you lose one to three pounds per week, that's fantastic. And you keep going for a year. Yeah, you're going to hit pl plateaus. You keep going for two years, depending on how much weight you want to lose. But if you lose two pounds per week, it's perfect. Okay, next slide. At 10 weeks, see these dark blue, the dark blue part of the graph? That's medication eliminated. So here's all these medications, and they're going away. So health is going up, medications are going down. I did a survey, oh man, probably eight years ago or more, on my, per, on my patients, and I asked them what they like about health care, what they don't like about health care. And it took me weeks and weeks to figure this out. I surveyed hundreds of people, and the number one thing about health care was that they didn't like the side effects of medications. So if the medications had no side effects, everybody would be on medications and they would love the medications. But the side effects are nasty. And some of the time, the side effects are death. Of course, nobody wants to be on medications. Okay, unless it's saving your life, of course. And that's valid. That's what they're designed to do. They, they're not designed to improve health. And we're trying to improve health. All right, so let's take those, that 10-week study. And now we're stretching it out to a year. And here's what they did. They didn't do those food diaries. 
Okay, there's uh, very misleading uh, research and data from food diaries because the diaries say, how many peaches have you eaten in the last five years? One per week, three per week, seven per month, and you got to fill in the little circle. And it's ridiculous. And then how many uh, cups of spare ribs do you eat? And like, how do you measure a cup of spare ribs? You put it in a blender? There's a video below that makes fun of that. So they didn't do diet records with this study. They just measured their beta hydroxybutyrate. That's that one. And this is what I do. I have people keep track of their diet. I've been having people check their diet for since 2004. <clears throat> but now I just want to see their beta hydroxybutyrate. And I have them use chronometer. So they put their food in there and they get the numbers. All right, here we're getting numbers. We work with numbers very well. And at the beginning, people were getting their uh, ketones up to 0.6 and higher, right? That's right here. And, um, and after a year, it went down to 0.4. They're in ketosis. This is mild ketosis. I have some diabetics that are, their uh, beta hydroxybutyrate is 2.0, 3.0. And they're getting results faster. But this is totally workable, super easy. Um, I got my ketones this morning were um, 0.7. I wasn't even trying. Okay, so here's the A1C, and it dropped significantly, significantly in the first 10 weeks from 7.6 to 6.5%. And for the rest of the year, it continued to drop. And that's important too, it went down to 6.3. Okay, now I get a lot of uh, attention from my uh, patients about their liver. They're asking me about liver enzymes, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, is a side effect of eating the standard American diet. And um, what it means that your liver is just filled with fat, becomes diseased, it doesn't work very well. And then the cells start to break down and they release enzymes. And those enzymes can be measured, ALT and AST. And over the course of one year, the ALT dropped 29% and AST dropped 20% compared to the standard uh, USDA low fat recommendation, low fat, low calorie down here basically stayed the same. So you got to get that liver in shape. So, and I got to point out what is Verda? Verda is the organization through which Dr. Finney and his uh, co workers did this study from. Okay, here's the continuous, the, the 12 month continuous care weight change. See how it dropped down and continued to drop and drop, drop, drop. And then it kind of plateaued down here for the last two, three, four months. That's fantastic. And then here, you would want to change things up. Clinically, this is what I've seen, and they did not do this, but you, I would give people out of ketosis. And then back in, in and out, in and out, and then you got to do some burst training and stuff like that, but they didn't put that in this study, which is fine. They had great results just with a single diet. <clears throat> Here's C-reactive protein. It also dropped over the course of one year by 39%. What is C-reactive protein? It's one of four... Um, blood clotting factors. It re, it's related to inflammation of the arteries and of the body. And the other three are fibrinogen, lipoprotein A, and homocysteine. And then the C-reactive protein I measure is called HS, high sensitivity CRP, C-reactive protein. It's more sensitive to the heart. So if any of those four are high, you got to get that down uh, because your chances of a heart attack go way up. And like I said earlier, it's not LDL. It's C-reactive protein and the other three that I mentioned. So, and what fixes this? Those four blood tests, ketogenic eating. Okay, over the course of one year, here's the reduction and elimination of medications. So the dark blue, all these medications were eliminated. In the light blue, they were decreased. The gray is no change. And the, re the red is new. Okay, but yeah, incredible reduction of uh, medications as opposed to the standard low-fat USDA food pyramid, anti-meat. Um, there's a lot of new medications. See the red right here. But otherwise, mostly no change. Some were taken out, some were added, but the gray is no change. You want to get off these medications. And it's not just weight loss causing the elimination of the medications. It's the change of the biochemistry in the body. So here's the last slide. This is the Holy Grail a vegan long-term study, 74 weeks by Dr. Neil Bernard. 
And yeah, there was this great reduction in the A1C long-term uh, blood sugar testing for diabetics. It went down like this. See, the initial 22 weeks, it went down like that, but then it started going up. And it, um, so in essence, it dropped down 0.4 absolute value, not percentage, of, but like 0.4 over the course of a, a year and a half. That's 74 weeks or so. But let me just show you this is actually the PubMed article that I've been talking about from Dr. Hallberg right here. And I highlight it. I know it's small. I'm just going to read it to you. It says, after one year, A1C declined uh, from 7.6 to 6.3. So 1.3 drop in A1C over the course of a year. And I, show, I, and I did show that right here in this graph. Okay, compare that to the vegan diet. It only dropped 0.4. All right, so there you go. There's my third, this is my third video talking about ketosis versus veganism. Ketosis wins again, and that's why I got this cool shirt because I have a patient. He's so thrilled with his results, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about this guy that gave me the shirt in a future video. He had Raynaud's. He had Raynaud's. In 20 years, I've never seen Raynaud's ever go away, and it went away. It's really exciting. So um, I hope you like this information. Please give me a thumbs up, share, subscribe. you got to hit that bell. Please hit the bell.